Welcome to Movie Speeching. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take good care. Musa is the name of the movie. Please like and subscribe to get every update. After witnessing the tragic death of his father, a socially inept engineering student creates a robot to seek revenge. One chaotic evening, a child saw people running away in panic when the police entered the area. The men entered a building and slowly moved toward the target. They come across a large robot with a countdown timer on its chest connected to multiple gas tanks. The sheriff warned his comrades to evacuate the area just as the entire room exploded elsewhere. A bruised WIA is handcuffed while an older man Varus questions him about his involvement in a crime. He greets Yaya and says he is happy to see him alive despite even though he was captured by his own people. The interrogator opens a file containing information about Yes as his life flashes before his eyes a few weeks ago. Yaya attends an engineering class and in the middle of the lecture, his best friend Reka whispers about his car repair project when Yaya answered, the sharp-eared teacher Ferris heard and he called the students to answer the question on the board. The shy man approached the board and answered with a new formula that the teacher had never taught the whole class when Yaya introduced a method for teachers to kick the offended person out of the class. Depressed Yaya Hurley walks down the hallway and accidentally bumps into a man holding tea when angry Bolivian man Rika comes to her rescue. Unfortunately, Crush Miriam witnesses his cowardice I should have provoked him. Yaya's father, Sala, comforted his son by admitting that he had gone through similar experiences when he was young. A while later, the father told his son that he wanted to go for a walk and visit the cabin while they were out. Nasser's family arrived on a motorbike and demanded to know where Sama was. Sala sent for Sama. They were taken to his parents' house for security knowing that Nasser was involved in illegal activities. Saleh's words angered the arrogant man and before leaving, he asked Sala if his wife was the one who called the police. But Sala admitted that this was reinforcing the grudge of the thug to the older man after Nasser left leaving father and son to continue towards the cabin where all of Yaya's hobbies and inventions were located. The man asked his father about his stillborn eldest child. His brother's name confused his father, who responded to Musa upon hearing the word Yaya. Introducing his eponymous miniature robot Yaya explains that he developed Musa and that he can control it remotely through VR. He said that by placing a device on his head, he said the device would connect to his spinal nerves through the temporal lobe and through his thoughts alone. Can control the robot, yes. Demonstrate this by easily making the robot crush a rock. Sala proudly praised his son's achievements just as Miriam nervously knocked on their door. She asked Yaya if he was okay and only received a small smile in response to the awkward person. The man left the cabin. The woman apologized to Sally for the sudden visit, but before turning to follow Yaya, the older man asked her to stay a while after sitting down. Sala asked her if she loved her son. She did not answer but insisted that she was not his friend just because she pitied him. Miriam then recounted the first time she met Yaya when she borrowed headphones to take piano lessons. She said she tried to return the headphones, but no one knew who Yaya was, which made her realize he had no friends during the interrogation. Ferris asked how Sala died, which Yaya denied happened weeks ago. Yaya cleans the windows while Sala says that Miriam has feelings for him, but the man thinks differently because he sees her with a handsome man. When it was time to encourage his son, Sulla recounted flirting with his wife, smiling in agreement. Then the older man asked Yaya to make tea while he turned on the music while the son put the kettle on the stove. He heard the sound of a car outside and looked over. In front of the house, he saw Nasser and two other men getting out of the car. The gangsters entered the house and attacked Sala, causing him to fall to the ground while his son peeked out the kitchen door. Nasser and his men hit steel and other valuables before erecting the entire house. Caught fire after the men left the house in a petrified state, yes, his dying father was engulfed in flames in the living room afterwards. The man sat outside the fire-ravaged house and watched after a while Miriam visited Yaya and tried to save Yaya's life consoled the man who said he would sell his house because he wouldn't need the bungalow until late at night. Yes, he jumped on the cold floor during the funeral for the loss the next day. The man went to the police station to file charges against Nasser, but the lack of evidence and his questionable credibility as the only witness led authorities to doubt his testimony. During interrogation, Ferris callously commented that Yaya should have walked into the fire and died with his father and that he could not do that out of cowardice. Recalling the night Yaya looked at the pile of money after selling the house and felt feeling guilty about leaving. 
His dying father made him hastily lock the house, throw the key out the window, and pour wine on himself. However, while holding a burning match, Yaya was unable to kill himself and extinguish the fire when his father appeared in front of him and asked him to avenge his death and change the world after Yaya turned his back on him for a split second. His father disappeared so the man panicked and tried to open the locked door forgetting that having thrown the key out of the window before, he immediately placed his robot in front of the door before controlling it to open the lock. He then realized the incredible power he possessed when he looked at Musa. He inspired the man working in his cabin to plan to build and program a life-sized Musa during Yaya's last visit to the police station. Nasser taunted him without even realizing it. That the man has plans for him in an abandoned building, Nasser discovers Yaya and orders his men to find him. Yaya hid in a room while the thugs searched the area. Yaya puts on his VR headset and activates Musa, who in turn comes out from under his car parked outside the building. The robot easily eliminates Nasser's friends. Outside, Nasser hears loud noises coming from inside before finally facing a robot twice his size and seeing the villain running away in fear in a VR setting. Yaya couldn't help but smile before throwing a wooden stick to knock down the fleeing man. Musa put Nasser in the car and closed the door with a fierce fire in his hand. Then the robot flipped the car while tearing up the fuel tank, causing the car to explode. The car exploded when the robot turned around. It was an innocent man filming the fascinating events on his phone. He let it. The man walked away despite the possibility of exposing himself to the authorities and people men immediately uploaded the video to the internet while it went viral. Yaya smilingly admits his revenge for his father's death before going to bed elsewhere. A doctor is examining Yusuf Farah, the son. The doctor revealed that his son's illness was getting worse and needed surgery in Germany at a cost of 200,000 euros, which the professor could not afford. The doctor then suggested an experimental procedure by a young doctor, but Ferris refused to leave his son in the hands of an inexperienced surgeon in the midst of their conversation. Ferris receives a call about a new mission, so he angrily leaves the clinic, breaking a window on the door and injured his hand one rainy night. Yaya receives a message from an internet friend saying that he knows Yaya did Musa after breaking into his computer. While Ferris attends a meeting about the robot incident and the manager assigns Zakaria and Ferris are in charge of the case. Later, the police arrived at the crime scene and took notes about the robot's dangerous capabilities. Currently, a group of billionaires are holding a meeting to discuss their plans. Because they want to get robots to make profits, they plan to plant a spy in the police force to get information. Meanwhile, Rekha visits Yaya and they watch the appointment with the robot incident investigation team on TV. Rekha shows him the sketchbook she borrowed and turns to the page with Musa's illustration, implying that she knows her seat with a serious tone. The woman said that everything was fine and that she would not tell anyone before asking the man if she could see Musa Yaya open the secret door upstairs leading to his basement and Reiko looked at the robot even more in surprise. Afterwards, Reiko takes Yaya home to show him a car they can use to transport Musa. Then they talk about Yaya's motivation to avenge his father as well as all those who have been wronged. Public in the world, Yaya looks at the artwork on the wall and sees the words, the old world must end. Rika says she supports his actions and recites the quote on the wall as their mantra, then reveals that he has a friend from the dark web who sent him a list of people in need arrested because they sold guns for shooting and orphans for their organs. Next trade one day, two friends drove to a warehouse and when they approached the building, they dropped Musa from the car into the warehouse. The armed men heard a loud noise from outside. Suddenly, Musa drove a car through the wall, causing the man to shoot the man. Robe immediately sets to work taking down the criminals, who soon realize that their guns do not slow Musa down. Unfortunately, a larger caliber machine gun bothered the robot, damaging it to some extent, so much so that even Yaya felt invisible pain while controlling Musa amid the chaos. Musa is thrown across the room when a leaking gas tank explodes next to him, then the robot narrowly misses a rocket-propelled grenade despite the pain and damage caused to the robot. Yaya tries to control Musa after wanting the robot to get up. Yaya takes down the thugs one by one before rescuing the kidnapped children and escaping the area before the authorities arrive. Meanwhile, the police receive a phone call regarding Musa's latest exploits and immediately go to the warehouse to investigate, where they find 20 criminals hanging from the ceiling. Varys finds another clue that suggests Musa is being controlled remotely and that the operator must be near the crime scene. 
For this to take effect later, Riker took the VR set and asked yes, he controlled Musa to respond, he took the lighter and lit the flame near her hand and she reacted quickly. He explained that her spinal reflex made her move her hand away from the flame fire, and he compares this response to how Musa's commands work. Any action it thinks of will be transmitted to the robot that performs that action. Days passed and the heroes fought warily. Crime across the city, from arresting thugs to rescuing children from bird buildings, they left a lasting impression on the people and their growing popularity inspired people put up posters supporting Musa. Meanwhile, Ferris finally invents a counting device for the vigilante robot on a rainy day. Reka visits with Miriam, they finally reveal their secret and show her Musa. But Miriam sets up argue that what they are doing could cost them their lives and discourage them from doing it. Now it continues that someone who doesn't support their cause knows their secret. Yaya and Rika have to hide everything and move in silence while the authorities receive a clue from a video showing a seemingly empty car that they believe could be the vehicle used to transport Musa. They searched license plate number in Sala that they connected to Nasser. The police then searched. It was hot but found nothing suspicious while Zakaria questioned Yaya Ferris left the room and followed Hamdi's assistant, Zakaria. He asked the assistant to show him the storage room and when he entered asked Hamdi if he worked with anyone else. The assistant denied the accusation but when the professor was about to inform Zakaria Hamdi, he finally again hesitates and admits that he works for Samir. Miriam's father and the billionaire, who insisted on having Musa after knowing. This information, Ferris promised not to tell anyone about Hamdi's transgressions and left that night. Varys took his son to the hospital after an episode, but still refused the experimental treatment the doctor offered him after the doctor left. Ferris assured Yusuf he would be fine in response, to which his son said he was not worried. Because Musa would save him after hearing his son's words, he made a plan. Forrest meets Samir and makes a deal with the billionaire. He will leave them to Musa in exchange for money for his son's medical treatment. Sensing his desperation, Samir accepts his proposal and they shake hands. The professor immediately comes up with a plan for a group of men to rob a train at the same time a journalist will videotape the incident and post it on the internet to attract attention from the Moose's conductor who finally sees the news about the robbery. And two vigilantes board the train. Another group kidnaps Miriam because they know that she consented. The weakness of watching the news. The professor calls his men and orders them to untie the carriage a moment later. Musa jumped into the robbed carriage, not knowing that the men had been robbed. Meanwhile, using a jammer, they disrupt Musa's signal to Yaya's headphones, cutting off the controller and allowing the criminals to begin taking the robot apart with chainsaws. Luckily, a passenger realizes this and grabs the jammer, allowing Yaya to connect with Musa and hit the criminals seeing as the train cars are almost completely separated. Musa uses his body as a bridge so people can get to the other carriage. Once all the passengers were safe, Musa's body was badly damaged and thrown to the side of the tracks. That evening, two vigilantes found a DVD in the cabin and played it. They watched the video and learned that Miriam has been kidnapped. Rika thinks it's a trap, but it's actually a trap. Mindful of the woman's safety and wishing to save her, he goes to Samir's mansion and announces that Ferris has his daughter. The old man called the professor and angrily said that kidnapping his daughter was not part of the plan after he sent Ferris' full name to his friend from the dark web, Yaya, to plan destroy Musa to emphasize his importance as the only one who knows. The robot's plan in hopes of keeping Miriam safe. He then sent a video to his own world explaining his life and introducing himself as Musa's creator before revealing the robot's whereabouts, saying goodbye to his invention before leaving. Farah's hideout and found himself back a few minutes later. Musa explodes after the police storm the building and Ferris receives news via a phone call to the professor that he must write a plan to release Miriam. However, the man also warned him that Samir would not forgive him easily if he did not let the billionaire's daughter go when he realized that Yaya was right. Ferris orders his men to free the woman after hearing her voice on Rika's phone assuring her that Yaya is safe. Begins to write the plan on the wall, he covers his nose and mouth with his shirt while secretly opening the light bulb while Rika closes all the car windows as a vehicle spewing thick white smoke passes by after the guards cough and fainted from the smoke. The men inside a truck immediately set off explosives throughout the building. The leader of the group was right, the mysterious dark web friend inside the building Ferris, who thought the smoke was just regular bug spray, and don't know what's going on. 
Yaya continued writing the formula when the professor noticed something was wrong so he ran away. Yaya immediately erases the writing on the wall but unfortunately cannot leave the building because men are blocking the exit so he calls Rika and tells her to leave but not before confessing his true feelings to Miriam. Something he was never able to do before the planted explosives detonated and the walls collapsed. Meanwhile, Ferris finds himself trapped at a police checkpoint and realizes that he will be arrested anyway and resigns himself to his fate. He called the doctor and finally agreed to the test. Performed by the young surgeon, he patted his son's head in defeat as he watched Zakaria walk out to his car moments later. Yaya's friend enters the building with the map and finds Yaya living under the rubble. He said that people like them don't die easily before helping him. A friend pulls him out of the rubble and out of the building. Meanwhile, a mysterious man searches the crime scene and finds Moose's mainframe intact on the ground. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.